Hey guys, Mike of Mike Likes here with you today. And today I thought I'd talk about a telescope that you might think you've seen before, and we almost have. Uh, this is the Celestron Nexstar 5 SE Schmidt Cassegrain telescope on a computerized alt as mount, which basically means that this is the kind of telescope that you align it to two or three stars in the night sky, and from there on, it knows where it's located and it'll take you on tours of the entire galaxy that's available to you. If you wanna punch in a Messier object like M42, it'll slew right to the Orion Nebula. If you punch in M45, it'll go over to the Pleiades. If you punch in M31, it'll go to the Andromeda Galaxy. That is hugely convenient for people that are observing with friends, family, young children, people that aren't patient about you as a new astronomer finding those objects in the night sky on a manual Dobsonian or some other kind of telescope that doesn't have computer assistance. So you'll find strong opinions for and against computerized telescopes. I personally really like them. I kind of feel like they're the Cadillac telescope. You sit back, you relax, you have a very comfortable position for your eyepiece over there where you're not going to be, you know, standing over it or under it to, to see that eyepiece. You just kind of have you know, the convenience of the go-to mount, and it goes from there. So a couple of specs for you of the Celestron 5-inch SCT. It's a very special scope because it is uh, fairly portable. You're talking about under 30 pounds. I think Celestron says 28 pounds on their site. And 28 pounds, that's enough uh, that's, that's a, that's a nice weight where you're not going to be lifting 40 or 50 or, or more pounds to get observing at the end of the day. Remember, astronomy happens after everything in your life has happened. It's at nighttime, right? So, you know, after you've worked or gone to school, after you've taken care of the kids, after you've fed yourself, done your chores, all that stuff, and the sky's clear and the weather's not horrible, maybe you go out and do some astronomy. Well, a smaller scope statistically gets used more often than a bigger scope. And you can see here that we've got five inches of aperture. It's a generous amount of aperture. It's a 1250 millimeter focal length, which puts it on par with a typical Dobsonian telescope. That's pretty nice for things like planets and far off objects like certain deep sky, you know, uh, objects up there. It'll do great on the moon as well. It can do really well terrestrially. They sell this telescope as a spotting scope. So if you want to use it for birds, go right ahead. Um, and yeah, at F10, you've got plenty of reach to get those you know small things large and five inches is enough aperture to you know see most of the Messier catalog if your skies are dark enough you can do a lot of good work with this that's something to really remember right where you're located matters if you're not in a dark sky area you don't necessarily need 10 or 12 inches of aperture because the light pollution in your area is going to dictate what you can see so if you're in a city downtown area, a five inch scope that you can throw in the back of your car and travel with, or even take on the bus if you're so inclined, has benefits over something like a 10 or a 12 inch scope that's gonna basically live wherever you put it. So I really like the five for that reason. A lot of people say, oh, you gotta get the eight inch, you gotta get the six inch, it's more aperture. Well, they're also heavier. And that matters when you're gonna be traveling with your scope. I really like this mount because at under, I wanna say it's under 20 pounds for the mount, which is full alt azimuth computerized control, you can put all sorts of different telescopes on this. You'll see that the scope is just using this Vixen compatible plate. So it actually disengages with that uh, thumb screw there and you can put other telescopes on it that are of similar weight class. So this scope itself is, you know, maybe seven or eight pounds. You can put a refractor on there that's, you know, up to 80 millimeters and it'll be just fine on a, on a mount like this. I often put my solar telescope on it because it'll track the sun if you configure it that way. And that's very convenient to do because the sun moves across the sky every day. Um, standard accessories that you find on the SE line, you've got your red dot finder, which remember to turn it off because I never do. You've got a 25 millimeter Celestron Plossal eyepiece. It's not a throwaway, it's a good eyepiece. You can keep that forever. Uh, you've got the standard star finder diagonal. Here's your focuser over here. And of course, on the mount, you've got your guide port if you're so inclined or your aux port. It's also got a wedge function. So if you want to align this equatorially for the purposes of taking pictures or doing that sort of thing, you can use the wedge function on this mount. It's included. Whereas on the 6SE and the 8SE, you have to buy a separate wedge and it's not a cheap accessory. I think it's like $300, something like that. Standard things apply. You cannot move this scope you know, manually. You have to use the slew controls, which is different than my evolution you can hear it 
it's quiet, it's smooth, it slews very nicely, it'll track for you. In my experience, the tracking has been really accurate, at least as comparable to the 6SE and the 8SE mount. Um, I don't know if I would say it's as comparable to the Evolution mount just because this doesn't have metal gears, the backlash is a little stronger, but it's totally fine for you know an astronomy newbie. You're not gonna notice what you haven't experienced before. And the pricing is, is one of these things that matters because Prior to COVID and the telescope market going bananas, you could get a 5SE for about $600. That price is now closer to $800 or $900. Now at that price, there's a lot of different options to consider. But if you want something automated that's not super duper heavy and it's portable and it's a, you know, a good reputable brand, it's a great product in Celestron's line, the 5-inch SCT has been with them since the 1970s. It's gone back to date almost as far back as the 8-inch. It was originally offered as a counterpart to the eight inch for people that just you know couldn't handle such a large scope so you know if you want to get a five inch sct this is what i would recommend it is the game in town to get um it's the only one i would choose and a lot of people will say aperture is king get the eight inch get the six inch well sometimes money is most important right and those telescopes have gotten extremely expensive and there's nothing wrong with getting a five inch scope this gives you all the creature comforts that you can get on the eight you can even attach a gps a star sense camera like like I do on that one. You've got Wi-Fi options on the aux port. You can really trick out a uh, Nexstar SE and have a very lightweight grab-and-go telescope that shows you a ton of stuff up there. All right, guys, I hope that you found this review helpful. I know it's a mini review. The weather has been dreary here in the Ohio winter. Uh, as always, if you love the channel, please throw me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you can. That's awesome. I love the support, and I hope to keep making some videos for you. I have a plan to do a solar telescope segment. I just need the sun to come out. You see it's overcast right now and kind of dreary. And I'm also going to show you guys the refractor that I often use for air travel, which is just even lighter than this uh, 5 inch SCT. And yeah, your support of the channel always means so much. So I'll see you guys next time. Clear skies and have a great day.